Father, we are just happy to have you all in the presence of the Lord and to worship and praise with us. There's nothing like giving thanks to the Lord Hallelujah. for all he has Hallelujah. done and continue to do in his precious name. So again, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't forget that turkey that's out there that's in the pot that you frying up. And don't forget the one in the oven, but we about to give you some praise. So if you're ready, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Woo! I will be reading our scripture from Acts 16, verses 16 through 26. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God and who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept our practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell, inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. Bow your head, please. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts, prayerful minds, and blessed spirits. Yeah, yeah. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep us all under your care, your watchful eye, and your hands. Lord, we just ask that our church, our nation, our community, our city, our state, in all of the world know who you are and whose they are for you are a mighty God who loves each and every one of us Lord we just ask you to continue to bless every household that is represented and Lord we thank you for allowing us to wake up and see yet another beautiful day that you my God has made Lord we can't do anything without you we just give you praise and honor, and we are grateful for everything. Everything. Everything, Lord, everything. We are grateful for the good, the bad, the ugly, and the not so pretty. Because, God, you are our God. Nobody else can take your place, Lord. Nobody else can do what you do in the way that you do it and how you do it. So this we ask in your precious name, and we say thank you. And thank you, Lord, for all those who are watching with us and giving you praise. And we just say thank you. In your precious name, amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said when Paul and Silas prayed, something happened. So we just come to tell you tonight as you lift up the name of Jesus and give him thanks, things begin to change. Things begin to happen. Breakthroughs begin to go forth. And we thank you tonight, God. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Oh, and we say thank you, Lord. And we honor you tonight, God. We honor you this morning, God, for everything. And we bless your name. Simple song says, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, 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 thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. And I lift my voice and I say thank, thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, and I just want to thank you, you Lord. Come on and help me say, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we lift up our voice and say, thank you we lift our hands and say thank you Lord in every way we lift our voice and say say thank you you Lord and I just want to thank I just want to thank Thank you, Lord. The next one says, you've been so good. You've been so good. Oh, you've been so good to me. You've been. And I lift my hands. Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you worship. Yeah. Listen, tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy is down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, listen, oh. Out in the streets and the drug habits some say they just can't beat mothers and robbers no place seems to be safe listen but you've been my protection every step of
this way. How many people are grateful this morning? Hallelujah. We all have so much to be grateful for. When we think about all the ways that God has made and how he kept us throughout this whole year and, and through the second year of a pandemic, we should be grateful. Hallelujah. So if you're grateful, just lift your hands right now where you are and just give God a, just give God a wave offering and just speak Speak well of him. Let him know how much you love him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, yeah. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Stories we want. I could. 
He's brought you 11 months and 25 days. You ought to be showing some gratefulness this year. You ought to be showing him some thanks on today. You ought to be showing him some praise on today. You ought to be giving him some glory on today. Somebody show him some gratefulness. 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 Come on. Show him some gratefulness. It's turning in your favor. Huh? It's turning in your favor. Whatever you've been dealing with, God said it's turning in your favor. All he wants you to do is show him some gratefulness. Yes, sir. Don't wait till the battle is over, baby. You ought to learn how to shout now. now. Somebody give God some praise. Oh. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody give God thanks. Exalt him in here, Zion. Come on, exalt him in here today. Come on, let's have the Bible says you got to put on the, sweat, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Somebody's been feeling like some weight all on you. But I guarantee you, if you learn how to give God some praise, if you learn how to lift up your voice, open up your mouth, get a praise on your tongue, open up your mouth and shout glory! Hallelujah! 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 I'm grateful, Lord. I thank you for a job. I thank you for a house. I thank you for my car. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my health. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my strength. I thank you for the activity of my limbs. I thank you that you put me in my right mind. I didn't go crazy where I should have gone crazy. Your grace kept me where I should have lost my mind. Your mercy walked with me. Let me know that it was going to be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Y'all don't wear, y'all wear to me. Y'all, be, y'all need to be giving God some praise. Yes, sir. Right there. Right there. Come on, give oh. him some praise Lord. this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let, us let us go into the house Hallelujah. of Hallelujah. the Lord. For this Hallelujah. is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, yes. And we will choose to rejoice and be glad Hallelujah. in it. Any grateful hearts this morning? Yes. Any grateful hearts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What a wonderful way to start out your day. Yeah, yeah. Your day of Thanksgiving by coming and all together we gathering to give a great God Bless your name, a great Jesus. praise. Amen. Not for just the things that he's done, but because of who he is. Uh-huh. Just because of who he is. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. My God, today, this praise team, Lord, have mercy. Come on, right where you are, why don't you all just begin to give God some praise. Some of y'all drop some hearts. You can drop some hearts in that in that chat box. Throw some likes in that chat box. Show your praise. I know we can't hear you praising here right now, but you can let the world see you giving God praise. Throw you some hearts in there. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in that chat box. Somebody ought to shout glory in the chat box. Come on, show the world. Let's exalt the king this morning. Let's exalt him. Listen, I know football is coming, but at least by the time you get to your football game, you're able to say, I got my praise home. So even if your team don't win today, at least your God got praise. And you're still on the winning side. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Come on. That's good. I, I know. I know. So we're not gonna be here long. We're gonna get out of your way. Uh, because I know, I, I know I wanna go watch the football game myself. Hallelujah. Uh, so uh, listen, 
I want to say uh, thank you to everybody that is serving this morning, as we always do. Uh, thank you to this wonderful, illustrious praise team on this morning. Thank you all so much. Appreciate y'all so much. My God, today, just some anointed voices just coming and ministering on this morning. Uh, I was uh, in the other room, and they were rehearsing. <laughs> And uh, Lord have mercy, they got to singing, and I just had to walk out the room. Um, I said, uh, we're going to have some good change, dismounting, hallelujah, uh, because they were already in a praise experience. Let me tell you something. There was nothing like listening at worshipers in a praise experience, yeah. Yeah. hallelujah, because see, our hearts begin to talk to God. And when your heart is in sync with the kingdom, your heart is in sync with God your heart will begin to flow out of your yes, voice. Yes, yes. And there's a sound that That's comes right. <laughs> right. when the heart is in sync right. with God. And I tell you, if you ever tap into that sound, hearing that sound of praise, hearing that sound yeah, of yeah. worship, I guarantee you it will rearrange and transform your life. Glory to God. Listen, have, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Listen, I feel like glory to God. I feel like shouting. <laughs> Hallelujah. My goodness, you can't you can't talk about being grateful for too long Listen, around me. Without a good plan, <laughs> and my feet not get light. <laughs> so I'm trying to be good. We under time constraint this morning, and I don't want to hold y'all alone. But I tell you, I feel like picking them up and putting them down. Because God's been just that good to my family. You don't, let me let me tell you something. Y'all know my testimony. Just this past year, both of my mothers, my mom, my biological mother, and my mom in love, almost checked out of here this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Almost checked yeah. out of here yeah. this year. Yeah. But God, but I have a right, yeah. and I have a reason Hallelujah. to tell the devil. Hallelujah. You couldn't have them. And everything that you tried this year, I'm so thankful that my God stepped in front of it and he began to block it. Oh, that's a, that, that right there is worth giving God praise because I'm sure you got a testimony too. As you think about some things that God's done for you in these last 11 months. Oh, and I heard somebody say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. <laughs> when I think of his goodness. Glory to God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Cause cause I I, I don't I don't um, let's go. We're gonna move. Listen. This is another time and opportunity for us to give God worship. This is just a continuation of the worship experience uh, on this morning. I want to say it's worship, it's offering time in the house. Uh, and for yes, yes, yes. For those of you, uh, you normally we would be in person and we would have ushers in the room, but today uh, it is all a virtual experience. And so for those of you that are watching, you see the ways of giving that are on our screen. Uh, on your screen on this morning, I want to invite you to take some time to help us in the mission of our church uh, to make disciples who will make more disciples. I want to ask you if you would consider a Thanksgiving offering today. Amen. And I want to invite you. You can give of our multiple ways uh, through Cash App. That's dollar sign J O F U M C. Or you can give uh, via PayPal. Uh, that's paypal.me forward slash J O F U M C. You can go online and you can pay there. Or you can go to our church website and you can click on the giving tab. That's faithjourneyumc.org. Org. Actually, if you want to go directly into uh, the giving module, that you would go faithjourneyumc.org forward slash giving. And that will take you right into our giving tab. And you will see a one-time give online. You will see recurring gift. If you would like to even offer a recurring donation, 
Um, but in there, you will be able to offer a donation uh, on this morning. Come on, let's make a sacrifice this morning. We'll talk about that in just a little bit here. Uh, you can also mail a gift in if you would like to, to our P.O. Box. That's Journey of Faith, UMC, P.O. Box 4087, Humble, Texas 77347. I invite you to join us for a time of giving. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Let us pray. God, we give thanks to you this morning. We praise you. We thank you for this time and opportunity to extend our gifts in worship as an extension of our praise uh, and thanks for all that you have been and all that you have done and all that you're going to do. For those that desire to give this morning uh, that don't are not able to give, God, I pray and increase upon their hands. Father, that they would be able to do as their hearts desire. For you said, if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your hearts let us find our delight in you and God that very thing that you have uh, that we have been desiring through our heart father you would do it you said that you would do it in your word we thank you once again for all you're doing uh, we pray right now Lord that you would bless these gifts some 60 some 100 fold father for what they shall give and accordingly to the works of their hands in Jesus name we pray and the people said amen come on, amen. Say, oh, come on. Get thanks. Oh, get to the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Say, oh, give thanks. Come to the Lord, for He is good. For He is good. Yes, He is. For He is good. For He is worthy. For He is good. Right where you are, 
Why don't you lift your hands? And everybody repeat after me. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given unto thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, he's been good to me. Show no good. That feels good. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all see, y'all listen, y'all see Miss Orphe and them up here getting down. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> Shoot. They having a praise party this morning. Listen, uh, I want to say once again, thank you for those of you um, that have tuned in to our worship experience uh, on this morning. Uh, we're so thankful. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want to ask you to help me. Help you, help me, help me, help you. Um, help somebody else. We sang the song, Lord, if I can help somebody as I travel alone, then my living shall not be in vain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. We don't sing songs much like that anymore. However, it's a part of our Christian journey to help somebody else along their way. So I want to invite you, if you would, help me to take some time and share this on your page with somebody because somebody today needs a word of encouragement. Somebody today needs a word of praise, need to hear other believers pray. Because whether you know it or not, these holiday seasons can be some of the most depressing times of the year. For folk that are dealing with bereavement, you all have seen recently all of all that has unfolded just in the news and the headlines um, with folk losing loved ones. Just this past week, these past couple of weeks, folk right here in the uh, city of Houston being buried as a result of, their, of the death uh, from the Astroworld event taking place a few weeks ago. So I want to ask you all during this time, if you would, share this with somebody. And I want to also invite you to join me for a time of prayer on today. I want you to pray for our city. I want you to pray for your city, for those of you that are watching from other, other parts of the world, other parts of the country. I invite you to take some time and let's pray for our world. My Bible says, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God said to Solomon, if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. God says, then will I hear from heaven, and I will heal the land. So I want to invite you to join me today for a time of prayer. Amen? Amen. Um, listen, let's get ready to go into the word of God here. And uh, we don't want to be before you long. Uh, but we want to share what God has put in my heart uh, to share with the people of God on today. We're going, if you will, join me. Um, if you have your Bibles, uh, I know we're in the tech-driven world, and so if you use a computer, if you use your phone, you use your tablet, I invite you to go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, and we will read verses 16 through 26. And today, um, I will be reading from the NIV version. That's the New International uh, Version. Typically, we would normally read um, from the NRSV, but today we are reading from the NIV. NIV. We're going to be talking about Paul and Silas in prison. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 26, and it reads as thus. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in, in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was much, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and at once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You all, for the time that is ours to share on this morning, I want to address this particular passage of scripture from the thought, prayers that loose chains. Prayers that loose chains. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. For your presence has been made manifest amongst us. We thank you that you are our dwelling place. And we thank you, Father, that we can hide in the secret place under the shadow of your almighty wing. Father, on this morning, during this time of thanksgiving, we ask that you would open up our ears, open up our hearts, so that your word may be deposited into this soil and that your word would germinate in our lives and at an overgrowth, hallelujah, of your spiritual gifts will take place as this word germinates. Now, Father, I ask that you help me to hold my opinion to myself. And God, you speak now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the preceding verses uh, of this particular passage of scripture, we recognize that Paul and Silas have been severely beaten and thrown into prison. Moreover, they've been thrown into the inner cell, the inner cell, which was usually its harshest, least ventilated, and most degrading section of the prison. Such conditions usually led to excessive uh, heat and dehydration, not to mention the fact that prisoners who had been beaten, such as the case of Paul and Silas, would have been exposed to possible infection of their wounds in such a filthy environment. I can imagine that Paul and Silas found themselves asking the question, how did we get here? We were simply minding our own business, walking to and from the place of prayer day after day. And this woman was bothering us. This woman was annoying us. Although this woman was telling the truth about who we were and the fact that we came to teach folk about the way, the truth, and the light. That no man comes to the Father except they come by Jesus Christ. This woman had become so annoying to the truth that was that Paul decided he was going to speak to the woman and the spirit of divination that the woman dwelt in and call the spirit out of her. Furthermore, imagine uh, that, that, that the pain they endured as a result of being severely beaten left them aching, moaning, 
and perhaps groaning. If most of us would be honest, we would testify to the fact that there have been times that life's challenges have beaten on us and left us aching spiritually. If most of us would be honest, we could testify that life at times has seemed to get the best of us. If we would be honest, we could testify to the fact that we have experienced times in our lives that left us moaning and groaning. What are you trying to say, Pastor Stephen? I'm glad you asked. Because all I'm trying to tell you this morning, today, what we can draw from this text, here's point number one, is that prayers that loose chains require sacrifice. And I'm convinced you all that, uh, that life's challenges have a way of preparing us for even greater challenges that are to come. But if you have not mastered the challenges on this level, God cannot trust you with elevation to deal with the challenges that are to come on the next level that he wants to take you to. Yeah, I'm convicted, you all, in my heart this morning by the realities that life's challenges represent the fact that you and I have been tested and tried for something greater still to come. It's in these challenges that our character is built. It's in these spiritual beatings that our faith is tested. Yeah, it's in these times that we become selfless for the sake of representing Jesus Christ, who said in his word, Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 through 12, he says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, Jesus says, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Saints, I, I, I want to declare and I want to decree over your life today that you have to go through something somewhere in life if you are to possess the kind of prayers that loose chains. Because only the folks who have had to fight some battles along life's way can experience this level of chain loosing prayer. Who am I talking to this morning? You know what it means to cry fast. You, you know what it means to fast. You know what it means to sacrifice. You know what it means to push your plate back. You know what it means to grab the horns of the altar. Who knows what it's like to work all day, run the kids here and there, and still have to press your way into God's face, asking him to turn some situations and some circumstances around for your family, turn some situations and circumstances around for your friends, and turn some situations and some circumstances around for your co-workers. Has anybody ever had to fight some hard-won wars and you can stand up today and testify my chain-loosing prayers didn't come easily, but I thank God I learned them nevertheless. Understand, uh, people of God, prayer is, this love, is, is on this level. I'm sorry, prayer on this level is not something to be obtained overnight. And while they're a direct result of much sacrifice, somebody shall sacrifice, I found out that prayers that loose chains are filled with praise to God. Let's talk praise. In his book, Israel's Praise, Dr. Walter Brueggemann says, praise articulates and embodies our capacity to yield, submit, and ab abandon ourselves in trust and gratitude to the one whose we are. He goes on to say, praise is not only a human requirement and a human need, it is also a human delight. Yeah, our, our praise, our praise, our praise is such as Brueggemann is saying, uh, our praise should lay at the center of our prayers and is definitely represented at the core of our hymnody. It is what we were created to do as God's own. The text informs us that Paul and Silas wrapped with pains and locked into the stocks begin to push through their moanings and groanings to pray and sing hymns unto God. 
Uh, it might sanctify imagination. I can hear them pushing past the agony while praying and singing something like, Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. And the refrain goes on to say, great is thy faithfulness. I wish I had some blood brought believers here this morning. They go on to say, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Some and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. I can imagine Paul and Silas while they're locked into their stocks beginning to say, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. That's why I sing great is thy faithfulness. Great is Thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I've needed, thy hand has provided. Great Lord, whatever I'm stuck in right now, I know that your hand is going to provide a way of escape. I'm locked, I'm bound. But whatever you're doing in this moment, I realize that you're not going to do it without me. And if I would just stop and give you some praise. Y'all miss your praise cue. Nonetheless, I ask the question here today. How can we expect to possess the kind of power from fruit-filled prayer that loses chains if our prayers are not accompanied by praise to God? Somebody said that praise is demonstrative. Uh, their feet were locked up. And the sense here is that they, could, uh, that they would not have uh, had space to even move as a result of their restraints. But that didn't prevent them from opening their mouths and giving God some praise. Some of you have been uh, experiencing a similar situation where uh, uh, you feel like you're in prison uh, and you're tied up. Uh, you feel as though spiritually you're, going, uh, you're being exposed to some less than comfortable conditions and you want to get out. Well, God sent me here this morning on this uh, 25th day of November 2021 to tell you and to serve notice that Satan messed up because while, he, while he's held your spirit, Spiritual feet captive, he forgot the gag order. <laughs> say, any, 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 anybody know what the gag order is? Does anybody know how a gag order works? See, see, you have to understand how a gag order works. The enemy has Paul and Silas locked up because he hating on them. <laughs> and sometimes your haters when they mad they'll try to fix a fight to get you locked up to get you pent up to get you stuck in a situation where you can't go to the left you can't go to the right you can't go forward you can't go backward you can't go south but one thing I found out is that we can always go north And that's why we say when the praises go, the blessings, they must come. <laughs> when praises go up, all of the tension that's going on in my family, it must come. When praises go up, all of the hell I'm dealing with on my job must come. When praises go up, that business deal that I've been working on, it must come. <laughs> Understand, I'm reminded that when Job, the Bible says, you remember Job, Job lost everything. He 
lost his children. He lost his livestock. Everything within a matter of days. And the Bible says that his so-called friends came to him and began to taunt him and make, try to make him give up on God. As a matter of fact, his own wife even came to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? But the Bible says <laughs> that Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And then in another part of the Bible, the Bible declares that Job said, one thing I know, I may have lost my children. I may have lost my barns. I may have lost my livestock. But one thing I know, my Redeemer lives. Understand, it is in your praise that God changes and transforms and renews and causes things to be released. Watch this, watch this. The enemy forgot to give, put a gag order on Paul and Silas. You know why he forgot the gag order? Because he doesn't have a right nor the authority to gag any of us. That's why we have the opportunity to give God praise. Why you think he want to shut you up? Why you think he don't want you to come to church and praise your God? Why you think the, 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 the praise leaders, the worship leaders, the pastor, whoever over the pulpit say, give God praise. Open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Because what we're trying to get you to understand is that when you open up your mouth and you begin to praise God, what happens in the atmosphere is a sound is released. A sound is released. A cry is released. And when you release that sound into the atmosphere, God cannot ignore the fact that you're blessing him. And that's why the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. But if the enemy arrests our praise, he can arrest our forward progression. If the enemy arrests your praise, your exhortation, your exaltation of the omnipotent one, then you have been defeated. And he knows that if he can get the edge on you. See, see, see. What he tries to do is make your situations more larger than what they really are. But you have to understand, I serve a God that's bigger than my problems, bigger than my situations, bigger than my enemies, bigger than my haters, bigger than my frenemies. And whatever the enemy put before you, the Bible says in Isaiah that you have to learn how to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Anybody know that the only one that can put a gag order on you is the Lord God himself, the righteous judge. And if you learn how to give that God some praise, whatever. Uh, all right. Let, let, let's, let, 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 let me, let me, let me, I, I got I to gotta share this with y'all. I got to share this with you. I got to share this. While the enemy thought he was doing something to hold you down or to hold you back or to hold you up, he failed to remember one thing. Although we walk in the flesh, uh, the Bible says we do not war after the flesh. For he says, uh, he says his word, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but they're mighty through God to the pulling down. Uh, so somebody, matter of fact, if you're sitting next to somebody, somebody else in the room with you, I know you're cooking, I know you got dressing in your hand, and you stuffing the turkey right now, but you ought to hunt somebody, or you ought to holler across the room and tell somebody right now, you got to pull it down. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, you got to say it like you mean. Tell somebody across the room like you mean it, like you mad as hell at the devil, and you let the devil know I'm pulling it down. Uh, the Bible says, the Bible says, casting down imaginations, things that the enemy want to put in your mind, make you feel like you're defeated, make you feel discouraged, make you feel like you ain't worth nothing, try to make you feel like you ain't competent, like you don't know what you're doing. But God says that you have the power to open up your mouth and declare his word that you are pulling down those strongholds. Uh, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity uh, every thought, every thought in obedience to Christ. I want to declare today to everybody that's under the sound of my voice, that if you would only open your mouth and begin to pray and sing praises to God, your prison situation will suddenly change. Oh yeah, God's, God's about to do a suddenly in your life. He's about to make a shift in your life. Everything that tried to stick you up, everything tried to hold you up, everything tried to lock you in, God says, when you start opening up your mouth, I'm going to move on your behalf and no devil in hell can hold your destiny. If you open up your mouth and you begin to praise me, no devil in hell can steal your destiny. If you open up your mouth and you begin to give me praise, I will do a new thing, says the Lord. Now everybody under the sound of my voice and everybody that's watching, open up your mouth right now and give God some praise. Oh, y'all not praising him. Y'all not praising him. I said open up your mouth and give God some praise. Okay, okay. You're standing at the edge of something mighty. You're standing at the edge of something great. God says, I want to do a new thing, but the problem that I have is that I want to get the glory. And if you give me my glory, whatever the thing is that's been pressing on you, that weight that's been pushed down on you, whatever's been oppressing you, God said to tell you today, if you would open your mouth and give me praise, like you'd have lost your mind, what Whatever it is, I'm going to do a new thing. Now let's try it again. Open up your mouth and give God the best praise. Praise ain't always convenient. Praise don't always come at the time where everything is going well, where everything is feeling good. That's why you got to press your way into praise. Somebody open up your mouth and give God some praise. And when it is that we learn how to tap into our sacrifices, we will find not only that our praise looses the chains on our lives, but we will also learn that prayers that loose chains are not constrained or restricted by location. The Bible declares in verse 25b, and I'm done, that Paul and Silas were praying. And as they prayed and sang hymns, 
the other prisoners were listening to them. Sometime God will put you in a place where your praise is going to touch the life of somebody else. <laughs> but if you never praise, how can they get delivered? If you never opened up your mouth and begin to glorify the God of your salvation, never open up your mouth to give glory to him that saved you, him that sanctified you, him that filled you with his precious gift. If you never opened up your mouth and begin to worship him and begin to praise him, how can you expect for hell's gate to be lifted up off of somebody else's life? But when we praise, he said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to. Understand, understand that your praise, your praise is like the fisherman's hook. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That wasn't even in my notes. Your praise becomes like the hook that when the fisherman throws out the lifeline. <laughs> Somebody say, throw out the lifeline. Because somebody is doing what? They're drifting. Okay. So, your praise, if it, your praise is a lifeline to your deliverance, your praise is not only a lifeline to your deliverance, but your praise becomes a lifeline to somebody else's deliverance. That's why when God blesses us, one of the first things we do is go to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all them places. And what we do, let me tell y'all about what God did for me. Because we've come into an understanding that if he did before, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore who will do it again. This is why praise is important to our prayer. And this is why you cannot allow your location. I don't care where you are spiritually. I don't care where you are physically. You can be in Germany. You can be in uh, Puerto Rico. You can be in Turks and Caicos. I don't care where you at. Your prayer is not constrained to your location. One problem that we have, y'all, today is that we want to hide our Christianity. We want to hide our salvation. We become so preoccupied with trying to fit in and blend in that someone around us is missing out on their deliverance because we refuse to praise God because we're embarrassed. But I heard the word and I heard Jesus say that if you be ashamed of me before men, <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody get delivered here today. If you be ashamed of me before men, Jesus said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Why do you think folk come to you and ask you, pray for me? Would you please pray for me? Would you please lift my family up? Would you please keep us up? Because they understand that you have relationship. You have relationship. Others of us, y'all, have become so blinded by the desire to fit in that our opportunity to witness has checked out. It, it, it punched the clock. It, it took an extended vacation. This is not the season for your praise and your prayers to take a break. No, no. See, 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 when I see little nine-year-old boys fell off his father's shoulder because of crowd surging. Nine-year-old little boys that, that were just there to enjoy and got trampled on. This is not the time for us as believers to be trying to be incognito, 
trying to blend in. Because of all of those folk that died at Astro World, all of them were young. If you don't open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and some of you got to pray and get in the spirit, you need to understand that the enemy is after your seed. Armand Arbery case is going on right now. And that irks me. Here's why. Because what do you mean to tell me that a lawyer can outright come on television, stand up in a courtroom and say, I don't want no more black pastors Watch this. Coming to intimidate the jury. How in the how in the world can you expect? Watch this. How can you expect us not to come support this family? Watch this. When the jury was set up to begin with to intimidate the only black person. See, sometimes the enemy will try to fix a fight, but God will turn that thing around. And what the folk at, at, at Philippi did not realize is while they were trying to fix the fight for Paul and Silas, their prayer and their praise would loose and turn the situation around. Prayer will loose every chain. We sing a song about it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There Jesus, everybody, to break every chain, everybody, break every chain, break every chain, everybody say it, come on, to break every chain, yes it is, break every chain, break every chain, Miss Hoffman, say that for me, there is power, there is power, Yeah. 
in your belly. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. That's all right. Open up your mouth and say to God whatever you think or feel you need to say. And as you practice that more and more, sometime it'll be like just having a conversation with a person. You just having conversation with God and you're telling God what's on your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your soul what's in your spirit and even at times you will find yourself declaring God's word blessing I will bless thee cursing I will curse thee you will curse everything around you that does not belong in your life and you will begin to command blessing to come upon your life blessing to come upon your spouse blessing to come upon your children blessings to come upon your house 
blessings to come upon your job. All you got to do is open up your mouth and begin to tell God what's on your heart. And as you grow, hallelujah, God wants us to grow in prayer. Saints, I'm telling you, this day of Thanksgiving, God is calling us to go deeper in our prayer life, deeper in our praise, open up our mouths and begin to exalt him. And every chain, God says, I'm going to break it. The chains will fall off. The prison doors will swing open. And not only you, but everybody in your company is depending upon your prayer. My God, today, can you imagine when all of us get on one accord and begin to praise God, how many more prisons will be open? How many more chains are going to fall? Let's go home. I hear the chains falling. Come on. Let's go home. Come on. Listen, I hope that you have a wonderful, blessed Thanksgiving day. Eat enough turkey for me. Eat enough dressing for me. Get some chitlins, too, while you're at it. Make sure you put some mustard and hot sauce on. <laughs> Glory to God. Let that sanctify you. Woo, glory. Get you some macaroni and cheese. Get you some, uh, some cranberry sauce. And throw on top of that turkey. Throw on top of that dressing and hog down. Just for today. And then tomorrow we'll be back at exercise. Glory to God. Listen, I want you to know we love you and we thank God for you. Let's get ready to go home. Let's break out. We thank you for today. I thank you for this time of praise and thanksgiving. For the Father, for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, open up our hearts and our minds now to begin to pray the more. To begin to get on our knees and to go after you. To grab the horns of the altar and begin to call your name into this earth. For God, this earth is groaning. This earth is moaning. This earth is in pain. And it is seeking a savior. And we know the Savior. We know the risen Savior that came to seek the lost and to save all of us and to give us life that more abundantly. And so we pray, dear God, today that you would help us to be the vessels of prayer, the vessels of praise, the vessels of thanksgiving, to help us to be a witness and to lift up your name so that you would draw men unto you. Now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, cover us, keep us, lead us, and guide us under your blood. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And the people say, thank God, thank God. and amen. Now let's declare it together. Greater is, he Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now y'all go with faith. We'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m. I hear, I hear the taste falling. that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As we worship in spirit and in truth, it is now your opportunity to go deeper in worship by way of giving. God asks of our time, our talents, and our gifts. As we continue worship today, we invite you to give toward God's ministry, putting God first and bringing the first fruits for kingdom building. There are multiple ways you can give. You can give online at faithjourneyumc.org. You can also give via PayPal or Cash App on your mobile device. And of course, you can always mail your tithe or offerings to our secure PO box address. If you're visiting with us for the first time or you're back again, we are so grateful to have you join in our worship today. We pray that your experience today be a blessing to you and to your family. If you would like to contribute toward our ministry, we thankfully welcome your gifts. Thank you, Journey of Faith, for your radical generosity as we are focused forward. And now let us declare together, all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee.